All right, gentlemen. First thing first, how are you? Doing all right. Good. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful day. Very happy to be out of America <laughs> and in a in a in here. Happy to be here. <laughs> Why uh, being away from America? Did you just do a tour or just? No, we've um, we've just been. I mean, we've just been there for the for ever. Mm. Like we've. I don't know, we're just used to traveling, so being in one place too much kind of gets on our nerves. Well, before, well, this might be a good segue then to go straight into the album, because uh, a song like Day and Night then, mm -hmm. which is about traveling and, and I suppose being on the road in a way. Um, did you have to get used to kind of, especially when the first album was released and then you got so many more opportunities? What was it like to, to travel all of a sudden that much? And I think at that point in our lives, we were just super excited and it was a really easy transition. The harder part was going back home and being more stable again okay. and learning how to not tra like be somewhere different every day and sit down and write music again. That took some time. But I think getting into touring is just like it's it's so super fun. easy to yeah. get into it and then <laughs> pretty hard to get out of it yeah. and like you know remember that like while you were touring all the other people like kids you went to high school with blah 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 like all your friends are like developing a real life <laughs> and you are kind of aren't you're yeah. like delaying you're like denying the fact that like a real life needs to form at some point mm. um so I think it was pretty tough for us to like form of real life but then again i mean in that uh microcosm kind of of the band uh, what was that like then because especially in terms of your friendship because you, you wrote that album it wasn't i believe it wasn't uh that long after you kind of started writing uh, together the, so, fir the first album yeah mm -hmm. so so what was it like being on that in that close proximity together then and then kind of uh creating a life for yourselves in a way well, we don't spend much time apart ever, Okay. so I feel like we pretty much just have the exact same life. <laughs> <laughs> um, like even when we're home, it's like, you know, okay. when we sh probably shouldn't be hanging out together, we're still hanging out. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of just stayed the same. We just kind of like are around each other all the time. So you weren't sick of each other yet after touring? And no. No. Like... I don't know, yeah, like the idea of making a second record, like it could have probably like fractured our relationship or something, but it didn't. I mean, it maybe made it stronger. When, because, uh, well, if you say you spend so, many, so much time together, when that idea of the, the second album came up, did you immediately have a bunch of songs ready and, and kind of? Mm -mm. Not at all. Um, yeah, we didn't really write on the road at all. Like that's a, kind of like, our embracing of the tour life doesn't leave much time to like, you know, sit down and write, I guess, necessarily. So very quickly, what, what does that mean, embracing the tour life? Just like, honestly, I think for us it meant like just meeting people in every city and hang, go, hanging out, like just being out in the cities and stuff as much as we could. So it wasn't much like downtime of just like sitting around. Um, and so yeah, when we got finished, it took like, you know, some time getting used to, again, being like home and then it, after that, being home translating into songs took a little time as well. Yeah, we didn't like write songs that we cared about until our lives like actually calmed down a little bit. Um, you know, until it just took us a while to like focus, I think. Well, was it a matter of, uh, or a question of time in a sense, or was there a catalyst that kind of... Uh... No, no one really put like too much pressure on us to like crank an album out because I think that they knew that it wouldn't that it would that we would be like sacrificing some quality if we did that um, what was the question? <laughs> well, whether it was kind of a gradual thing to, oh, yeah. to get yeah. ready for yeah for it was next. Okay. yeah just I, I just I think our music like probably our music comes from a place of I guess stability and just like you know we like to think things through quite a bit yeah mm. Patience. We were just like really patient. Yeah. Okay. So, what was the first song that that kind of started or arose out of that? Giving up yeah. it was like really the the first one that was like fully formed. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. And I say, like, we like to think things through, but I think actually what it is is, like, we like to get in a in a state of mind that allows, like, us to maybe catch, like, lightning in a bottle or something, mm -hmm. like, you know? And giving up was the first time that that actually happened in this whole process. Like, we wrote that song in, like, 45 minutes. Okay. And it's a simple song. It's not, like, that sounds, like, implausible or something, but... Yeah, that one came out like kind of as is, like a fully formed idea. But then how sh should I picture it then? Is it just the two of you in a room and just riffing off each other? And yeah. Like, okay. So for giving up specifically, he was playing guitar and singing, and I was like on a piano, and we just kind of like started playing. And then something comes out. And yeah. Do, do, when, because I imagine this happens a lot, but do you immediately know uh, if it's going to work, or do you know kind of, okay, we've got something now? Yes and no. Sometimes it, it's different for every song, but sometimes it'll be like, this is perfect and this is going to work. And then after working on a song for two months, you just throw it away. And you're okay. just like, oh, it obviously wasn't going to work when you thought it would. <laughs> because in that sense, were you looking for something specifically uh, for the second record? Or was it just whatever? Uh... I think it's just like a feel, like we want to feel a certain way about it. Mm. And if we work on a song for a certain, like a while, and have lost that feeling, then it means that maybe uh, we shouldn't use it, you know? But if we've been working on a song for like a month or two, like perfecting lyrics or whatever, and we're still feeling excited and inspired by it, then it means that we should probably hold on to it. And with this one, I, I believe uh, giving up the, the, the lyrics were quite a uh, stream of consciousness uh, initially. When you kind of revisited it, and maybe after a couple of months, uh, what did you see, what did you see in the lyrics in, in terms of uh, what was going on in your mind? We made like a little tweak towards the end of the process um, with those lyrics, but I don't know. I guess when we revisit them now, it's like it's funny because everyone's like, "Oh, it's like a breakup song." Like everyone talks about those lyrics as if they the relationship's over, but it's like really about like the ups and downs in, in a relationship and just like tough a tough time in a relationship like but never actually giving up on it just mm. feeling like someone is giving up because i feel like everyone has felt that way probably but it's all it's also i suppose in in a sense uh from the other perspective you're kind mm. of feeling that somebody mm. else is giving yeah. up yeah mm. and also like the line uh waiting for the morning sun i feel like is a thing that like you know we've all felt of just like being with someone and like even just in the most realist sense, like them being out all night and like maybe not sure what, not really sure what they're doing or whatever. And also, I've spent definitely nights out really late and gone back and my girlfriend's or partner's been like, what have you been doing? Like, what the hell? Uh, so I think there's definitely like a real sense in that. Mm -hmm. And and these kind of ideas, uh, relationships, but there's also, um, well, relationships in all forms, I suppose, uh, friendship, but also uh, kind of... Uh, uh, romantic and uh, maybe maybe even larger in, in that sense but then there's uh, a lot of maybe a, a sense of loss or a sense of uh, anxiety for towards loss so, so this this idea was was this something that um, wh when did this kind of idea this theme pop up um, definitely I think anxiety is a theme of the the record and I think it comes from us both being more stable relationships and kind of once you're past the ex really exciting part of a relationship and are really getting to like the se really serious part of it, mm. the anxiety, like there's always anxiety about something I feel like hiding beneath like the like romance and even in friendships, it doesn't even have to be like a romantic relationship, a really close friendship. There's always like some sort of like darkness somewhere. It's well, just like the nature of them. Well, mm. One good example, I suppose, is um, a song for Thai, which, which is, I believe, a friend of yours mm -hmm. that moved away uh, to LA. So, with, and, and I, I can relate to certain friends that you used to be very close with but aren't for some reason mm -hmm. anymore. And then, so, so is it one of those type of stories where, where you're kind of uh, trying to make sense of how those friendships ebb and flow? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that, I mean, that was definitely a constant throughout the whole process and deciding, like, committing to, like, oh, we're going to write about so-and-so, we're going to write about this thing. Um, 
but yeah, I think the overarching theme also going back to that question is like, I think it was just something that we had always felt and putting it into words is like, mm. it kind of came naturally, like forever turned around itself was like, was something that just kind of popped up and it was like, oh, that could, mm. the whole time that you're writing, you're like, is this going to be the album title? It's like an unspoken thing. Mm. And that was the f first one where it was like, oh, that's the album title. Okay. And like, um, yeah, I don't know. The themes are like, I think pretty universal though. Mm. But in that sense, are you always uh, on the same uh, line in a way, musically? Yeah, not. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think at I think there are small points that the lyrics maybe mean different things to us, sure. like very minimally. But I think that's kind of cool. Like that's like why we it'll work for like other people as well. Like we see the lyrics differently, but we know that they like mean something specific to us. Yeah, that's like that's proof that like other people are gonna find what they want in it to us. I think. And uh, with the song, well, to take a song for Ty as an example, then. Um, well, let, let me ask this first. Do you generally write the music first or the, uh, the lyrics or is it kind of music? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with that song, wh when did you kind of realize uh, you wanted to go that way with, this, uh, with the music? Wait, with the music or the... the... With the music, yeah, because it has, uh, I believe, you kind of try to create that 90s R&B. Yeah, 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 that's exactly... Yeah, that's, uh, that was the only song, act, or one of the only songs that came about because we were like, oh, we should probably write another song. <laughs> like, it wasn't like, we were like, we knew that we were nearing the number, like, we always, or we have always wanted 10 songs. Mm. Um, we knew that we were, like, kind of close. But, yeah, that was the one where we, like, just kind of sat down. I think it was the same thing. I, like, picked up a guitar, and I was like, put a couple chords together. He grabbed a guitar, and, like, you know, we just kind of yeah. hashed it out. Um, that was another quick one. The, the, the giving up and that one were the two that kind of like just came together okay. with that like the that music at least came Song together. Song for Time might be my favorite like chord progression and melody though. Mm. Like I, I think it's the, maybe the catchiest. Because I, I do think you, the, the both of you kind of grew up in that era. Of yeah, and that's like and also like right. uh, Tyler, who the song's like titled for and about. Um, when we were hanging out, that's like all the music he would play. So that, that was like kind of like immediately we we're like, oh, this sounds like a, a song for Tyler, and then that's where like kind of like it started to be about him. Okay. And then, then, do you know if he heard the song? Yeah. Yeah. He told yeah. he told me he was in his car uh, and listened to the whole record. Like the label sent him the watermark okay. stream or whatever, and he, yeah, he said he was like crying in his car. He like texted me. He was like. I can't stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a good thing, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, you said those were, were the easiest ones. Now I read that um, a friend of mine was a difficult one to write. Am I right in saying that? Yeah. Well, we had the we had basically the music for it two years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. It was and like the first we had the we started the verse like a mm. long time ago, like when early on in the the light upon the lake cycle. Yeah. Um, but it just, I, I can't tell why it took so long to put that song together, but it, just, it was like a thorn in our sides for like forever. Make, and then, I think it was just making it like a cohesive idea that, you know, where all the parts fit together was like a yeah. huge challenge. And I think we just like loved the melody and the chords and the way they work together so much that it was like, how do we like make this perfect or something, you know, got maybe two in our heads about it, but because we were. A lot of the, the kind of the extra things and the, the horns and strings mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, and then not just for this song, but um, when do, the, the, do do you already have them in your minds as, as you're writing them? I think we have, if not the specific part, we we reserve space for it. Mm -hmm. We're like, this this seems like a section where this texture could come in somehow. Yeah, and sometimes it'll be like a, you know, a guitar melody or something, mm -hmm. or a vocal melody where it'll be like, oh, that would that would sound way better on horns, <laughs> and then. Yeah, get Will in to, to do it. Yeah, but he, the, he came up with the horns on the at the end of Friend of Mine, though, and yeah. that's like the, you know, maybe the best part he's come up with. Um, that, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it was pointless. No, was, uh, I was, I was going to ask, uh, how, how much um, of an influence do, uh, obviously, Rado you worked with uh, last time, mm -hmm. and 
this time Brad Cook as well. Mm. And, and how, how much effect uh, do this kind of the people around you have on, on what ultimately ultimately turns up on the record? Um, quite a bit. I mean, last time not so much, just because we we didn't even know that we were going to record with Rado. Mm. Like we thought we had recorded the final <laughs> versions of the songs at our apartment. Um, this time we showed up with like kind of half finished stuff, okay. so we kind we needed some input. Brad Cook especially, like he, he's like a genius bass player. He's like the craziest bass player I've ever met. Um, and not in like a, like a Thundercat, like freaking you out kind of technical way. He's just like really good at coming up with lines. Yeah, he's like a songwriter's bass player. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we needed that for sure. Yeah, I think the, what really helped with um, Rado and Brad was like, getting the like really structural parts of the songs down and then like stuff like horns and strings we all we always do those ourselves in chicago like within this time we did them in a basement you know just right. kind of where we can set it up but, like the flourishes of the album we'll usually do last but the structural stuff this time i think was more so influenced like with those studio sessions and then it, it's especially because uh, well the fact that you work so closely together, the two of you, is it, is it good to have somebody outside of kind of the yeah, two? Yeah, that's, that's where Ziad came in, okay. uh, like, really heavily this time around. Like, mm -hmm. it was, like, near the end of the writing process, um, the final, I guess, like, 20% of the album or 30%, whatever. Um, I, we had been listening to the songs for so long, just sure. alone, kind of, you know, banging our heads against the wall or something, and then worked with him, and it was just, like, everything just kind of... Because he he used he used to play guitar for you. Yeah, and he, he's he's back in the band, so he's gonna be on tour with us um, this next round. Did that bring you back to kind of the the, the mentality also of, of when you started out? Um, of when when you started the band and kind of that. A idea little bit, of yeah, because he's just always been one of our best friends in the whole world um, and favorite mus musicians in the whole world. So. Yeah, like that sense of familiarity was pretty huge for us, I think. And then being in Chicago, I suppose, uh, mm -hmm. in, in that basement, the, that's a special yeah. spot for you guys, right? Yeah, we definitely um, worked, even the past eight, seven, eight years, him and I have been down there just like a lot, because he's always had that space and it's mm -hmm. kind of close, been close to where we live and you can always go down there and play music, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it was really nice to finish it there because it, Really was an album made over like so many different places, sure. like California, we were in Wisconsin, um, and then to finish everything in Chicago in the basement was like a final, mm -hmm. you know, everything coming together. Well, that's that's an interesting point because I wrote a couple of places down, uh, like you mentioned, um, already Chicago, uh, but also Montana, Wisconsin, all, yeah. all those places. And how, how do they these places influence kind of the the songwriting, or the, do they? Uh, yeah, the I mean, Valley specifically was written after like we we were on tour like a short run and we drove through um what what area was that again it was actually a specific va like oh, valley something valley um, bitterroot Bitter valley. bitterroot valley in montana yeah. it was like an hour an hour maybe two hours drive just like the most beautiful okay. part of america we'd ever seen everyone was super stoned yeah we were just like <laughs> freaking out and then we went to this we kind of like rented a house we had a day off and wrote that song in that day off okay that's it and or wrote like the melody yeah. and stuff like the we were the lyrical content <laughs> was harder to come by and it happened later <laughs> well was it difficult or did, did you end up uh, where did you end up kind of finding the inspiration for for the lyrics? all the, a lot of the lyric i mean all the lyrics were like totally finalized in the basement okay. after like a pretty long period of you know just being like discontent with them yeah, I think we, sense? I think yeah. we almost re we recorded a version of each song with different lyrics in each place that we recorded. Okay. So like in California, they had certain lyrics, and then a different session in Wisconsin, they were changed a little bit. And then Chicago, they were like finalized. Because mm -hmm. well, I, I find it uh, an interesting point because uh, as you travel around, you tour, and then, and then like you say, the, um, you're in a stable situation in a sense, but then you go away the, mm -hmm. uh, to different places and stuff. I can imagine that changing your mind about things. I mean, seeing certain parts of America, changing your mind about. So, so in, in that sense, with the, did you, what were those initial lyrics about? Were they about something totally different than than what kind of? 
the way it turned out? Or I think that even like the draft lyrics were all followed the similar theme. Okay. It was just finding the right like way to present that theme right. that like we thought yeah. was the smartest and like. Well, like doing just doing it in a way that like we're actually proud of. And that's, that's, I mean, it's been the same. It was the same with Flight Upon the Lake as well. It's like, okay. yeah, we're not covering any, we're not breaking new ground here, but we're like, you know, I, we're covering like the topic of breakup or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or heartbreak, like in a way that we're really proud of. And that's mm -hmm. like all you can really hope for, hope for I think. To kind of uh, come full circle then, going back to, to uh, the touring life or the life of, of a musician uh, that is quite different than like you say the people that just get a job uh, back home and then it is very different so, so so what is how do how do they perceive do you know how they kind of perceive what you do and and, and or make sense of what you do hmm. the people in then can be parents and, yeah. and i think it's glamorized a little bit okay. um but i don't know it's kind of hard to <laughs> well, yeah, the, the, oh. as I was saying, yeah. saying it, it's, it's difficult to, to kind of... Well, it's like different people have a different perspective on it. I think, like, I don't know, I haven't been single for a while, but, like, I think as you get a little bit older, it's like, you know, you meet people and, and they're like, oh, you're a musician. Nice, cool. Uh, <laughs> I bet you take good care of yourself kind of thing. Um, yeah, whereas I think it used to just maybe... There is like a glamorization when you're like 19 or something, and it's like, oh my god, like I don't know. It's it is hard to put into words, but it's like as you get older, I don't think musicians are cool. <laughs> <laughs> like I really don't. I was like, okay, I mean, if I I respect when people are passionate about stuff, but yeah, it's weird. No, but well, one thing uh, artists occasionally tell me about this is, um, well, you miss certain birthdays, and then mm -hmm. by the time you, uh, and all kinds of events, but, but then by the time you get back home and you're, you're settling in in that stable thing, you, you kind of miss inside jokes, you, you don't have mm -hmm. the same connection as you did maybe a year yeah. ago, so, so how do you adjust to, to kind of those two worlds, how do you balance those two worlds? Well, I think, and also like our writing process, especially for this album is like pretty isolating like we just like like you know we do travel like alone places and like go places on our like yeah just leave all the time um so i don't really know if we ever figured out how to integrate back into it and i think it took us a while to embrace just kind of like being on that outside of things like that but yeah it is, is kind of weird it's like it's pretty easy to feel like uh feel kind of worthless when you're like a musician that's not touring like mm -hmm. a musician that's like just at home mm -hmm. inactive or whatever even if you're writing it's like you know and i'm not complaining about that or saying like woe is us but it's just how, it's just, just how you know, feel it's yeah. pretty easy you're to fall like... into like feeling like a piece of crap <laughs> <laughs> and then until until you're back on the road yeah i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll see how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much yeah, for your yeah. time. Awesome. Thank you.